Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with a video about mutation testing in C Sharp. To explain what mutation testing is, it's probably going to be easiest to show you an example. So I've got here um, code for a Mars rover. This is a simple exercise where we write um, some code to steer a Mars rover across the idealized XY grid surface of Mars. And we can send our rover sequences of instructions, a string of characters, um, R for right, um, L for left, F to move one square forward, and B to move one square back. And we end up with this rather nasty code here, uh, which I would really like to refactor. But before I refactor this code, it's very important to ask one question. If I were to break this, would I know? And for that, what I'm going to need is a really good suite of unit tests that I can run quickly that will let me know whether or not I've broken the code. I have some unit tests because I did test-driven development to write my Rover code in the first place. And here they are, all nice and parameterized, a whole bunch of them. And um, before I do any refactoring, I'm just going to run the unit tests and make sure, first of all, that they are all passing. So let's run all our tests. So 17 tests, they're all green. That means my code must work, doesn't it? Well, not necessarily. It's quite possible there's some code that's not being tested. So the question I'm asking here is, how much confidence could I place in these tests when I'm doing my refactoring? One way we could get a feel for that would be to see what the code coverage of the tests is, how much of this Rover code is actually being executed by tests. And I have, um, I'm using Rider and I have a tool called uh, Dot Cover installed here that I can use to run my tests and get a coverage report to tell me how much of the Rover code is actually being tested. So let's run that. 100%, so all the tests are passing and we've got 100% code coverage. Now, that must mean that I've got good tests, that I'm safe to do the refactoring. But not necessarily. Just because code is being executed by tests doesn't necessarily mean that that code is actually being tested. Um, for that, we need to have confidence that the tests are good tests and not just tests that execute all of our code. So how can we get a measure of how much faith we should place in our tests? This is where mutation testing comes in. Mutation testing is a practice that deliberately introduces errors into the code and then runs the test to see whether or not our tests fail. So what we do is I'm going to demonstrate this manually. We take a line of code, let's say this line of code here, and we create a mutated version of the code by changing that line in some way. We create a mutant of the code. For example, instruction equals R, this line of code here. Well, we could replace that with not equal to R. That's obviously wrong, but it is syntactically valid C-sharp, and it means we'll be able to run the tests and see whether or not making that mutation causes any of the tests to fail. Let's rerun our tests. We've got failing tests. We've got a whole bunch of failing tests here. Um, when the tests fail, we say that our test suite has killed the mutant, basically. In other words, if we were to break that line of code, there's a pretty good chance that our test suite would catch that. And that's what we're looking to find out when we do mutation testing. We can make all sorts of changes. Let's just change that back. Let's change that, for example, face equals n. Well, that's a Boolean expression. We can re replace it with another Boolean expression like true. And again, let's rerun our test and see whether or not our test suite kills the mutant. And indeed it does. Three of our tests are failing. So we're getting a good feel here by making, by mutating one line of code at a time, replace equals with not equals, replace a Boolean expression with true, replace a greater than with a less than or equal to, 
change the, um, the values of expressions or variables. So for example, if it's a number, we could change it to zero and then run our tests and see whether or not any of our tests fail. And line by line, we then begin to build up a picture of what we call the mutation coverage of our tests. In other words, how much of our code is actually being tested, not just executed, but actually tested. If we were to break that line of code, would any tests fail? And that's mutation testing in a nutshell. It's introducing deliberate errors into the code and then seeing whether or not our test suite catches those errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mutation test my Mars Rover to see how much confidence I should place in my test suite. Remember, all the tests are passing, 100% code coverage. But the question is, can I really trust those tests to bail me out if I break this code? Now, you'll be delighted to hear, I could do this manually, I could do it one line at a time, and that would take quite a long time, and it would be very boring um, to watch. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to use an automated muta mutation testing tool. Um, for C Sharp, we have a tool called Striker. In actual fact, it started out as a JavaScript mutation testing tool. But you'll see that there are preview versions now for C Sharp and Scala. So if we click on the C Sharp, we'll get an overview of it. Um, of how it works, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and here are the um, the instructions for getting started with Striker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this using NuGet, and then we're going to use Striker to mutation test um, our um, our code here and see whether or not we really can trust those rover tests. So first of all, I want to install it locally for the test project. So that's those oops, that's those instructions there. Just going to cut that and paste that into my terminal here. Am I in the yeah? I'm in the Mars Rover test folder, so I'm in the right project, our test project. So let's paste that. Hopefully that will install Striker. Okay, it's installed and it's ready to go. Um, so to use Striker here, we can just use the Striker command. And we need to provide a little bit of extra information because I'm testing here, a mutation testing a, a .NET framework solution as opposed to a .NET core solution. I need to provide some information about the location of the uh, solution file, which is what is in the root folder. So it's one above us. And it's in this case, it's the name of the solution is C Sharp. Refactoring she sharp she shell she shells on the seashore um, dot solution. So just a bit of extra information in there. What it's going to do is it's going to take a look at this Mars Rover test um, Visual Studio project, um, and then it's going to figure out where the code that's being tested is. In this case, it's in a separate project called Mars Rover because it's the only reference to another project. It will mutate that Mars Rover code one line at a time run my tests using VS test. Just a quick note here, by the way, um, because I'm using n unit tests, one thing you need to be sure of before you do this is we'll take a look. I've got the n unit three test adapter for Visual Studio installed. So that the VS test test runner has the, the right adapter to discover n unit tests and execute those. So just a bit of extra thing that I had to figure out when I was first doing this. So it's going to mutate the code. It's going to use the, the VS test console um, executable to execute my end unit tests. And then it will see whether or not any of those tests fail. And it will build a report at the end that tells me what percentage of my code is actually really probably being tested. So let's go back to our terminal and hit enter. And that should do our mutation test for us. Off it goes. Nice little bit of ASCII art there. I do like a bit of ASCII art in a command line app. Feast for the eyes. Off it goes. Now, it's crunching the code here, so it's not going to be super, super fast. Um, but it's certainly faster than doing it by hand. Okay, it's identified 66 possible mutations that it can perform here. Off it goes, and it's crunching its way through them. Now, you'll be pleased to hear this is not something that you need to do every five minutes because it takes a while. It's, it's very compute intensive. Um, so a larger code basis is the kind of thing that I might run maybe once a day or run as part of an overnight job. 
Okay. Ah, interesting. Okay. So remember, all our tests are passing. Our tests are executing 100% of the Rover code. But in our mutation coverage report here, it's telling us that 16 of our mutants, 16 deliberate errors introduced, did not cause any tests to fail. So that would strongly suggest that there is a gap in our test coverage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this report. It'd be nice if this was a link. Just a little hint. So as I understand it, Striker4.net is still very much a work in progress. So if you're a Striker developer or a contributor, um, that would be nice if that was a link. Thanks. Um, but no bother. Let's just open Windows Explorer. And we can just paste that in. And that will open our... There we go. There's our coverage report. So now we can drill down and go, okay, where are these mutations happening that are not being picked up by the tests? Well, all of these green instructions here say, yep, we mutated that and your tests killed that mutant. We mutated that, your tests killed that mutant. But as we scroll down, we see... Ah! So there are a bunch of mutations that were performed here for the, when the instruction is B, when we're telling the rover to move backwards one space. Pretty much all of this code was mutated. Let's take an example of what they did. For example, yeah, turned equals into not equals, exactly as I did. What else did we do? Did a not, <laughs> so sort of negated it. Changed the value of a literal there to an empty string and so on and so forth. So it did a bunch of stuff. And our mutants survived, strongly suggesting that this block of code here is not really being tested. Let's take a look at our tests. So where is the test? We've got a parameterized test here done in end unit. Moves forward, moves back. So this is the test. These are the tests for moving backwards. Hmm. Do you, do you see it? I see it. There's no test assertion. Of course they're passing. We're not asking a question. Now, particularly when teams measure things like code coverage of tests, there is a tendency for developers, naughty people as we are, to game that metric. And one way you can game a metric to get high coverage is to have tests that don't actually, that, that can't fail. Basically, they execute all the code, but they're not really tests. And it looks like we might have an example here. It might be that the developer just forgot to wrote the assertion. Although, since I wrote this code, I know that not to be the case. What may have happened here is that these tests were failing and the developer thought, hmm, I know what I'll do. Failing tests, let's make them all pass. I know it's bad, but teams, a lot of teams do do that. They comment out tests, they ignore tests, and they edit tests so that they can't fail. Let's make this a failing test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use collection assert, and we're going to assert that our, what we're expecting is the end position of our rover should actually change, should be equal to the, uh, the current position. So in our test, we've got a bunch of positions in x, y coordinates where we're expecting the rover to end up, and we just weren't testing that. Now let's first of all, just check that these tests still pass. So let's rerun them. Okay, super duper. Now, let's try mutation testing again and see what that does. So, that's a fact I can probably just repeat that. Yep. Off it goes. So it's crunching the code and running the tests. Bunch of optimization stuff in the background looks like it's going on as well which will be particularly handy if you're working on a large code base. So I do like, I've been using Striker for the last couple of days for, for JavaScript. It's the first time I've used it on a .NET project today. And um, apart from .NET is a more complex platform, so there's a bit more fiddling, a bit more yak shaving that has to go on. But on the whole, I've found it pretty easy to use. 
So crunching, crunching, crunching. We'll be there soon. We lovely bit went ding at the end like a microwave oven. So it's killing, it's killed all of the mutants. So we have closed a gap in our test suite. And now I have high confidence in those tests that if I were to break this code, these tests would pick that up. As a safety net for refactoring, for example, I have a lot more confidence in it now. So that's mutation testing. It is a powerful and very useful technique for getting a sense of just how much faith we should place in a test suite. If there are gaps in the test suite, this is more likely to show them up than just looking at, for example, code coverage. It's a much more meaningful metric since we're actually measuring the probability that tests will fail if the code is broken rather than just whether or not code is being executed by tests because the only thing that can tell you for sure is which code is definitely not being tested. Very useful technique. Hope you have a play. If you're a C-sharp developer, take a look at Striker. I'm, as I said, it looks like it's still, it's a preview and it's still a work in progress, um, but it's looking pretty mature at the moment. Um, and um, you may find it very useful. It works for .NET Core and .NET Framework projects with varying amounts of tweaking. Um, so have a play with that, have a play on your code. See how good your tests are.